Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Green Up Beacon Video News Magazine. I'm your host, Brittany Hoback, and today we have a great show planned for you today. First up, I'll be interviewing Sean Moore, who is the Russell Middle School uh, principal. And then after that, we have Joe Grizzle, who is the Russell High School girls soccer coach. And they are doing very well this year, getting ready to go down to Lexington for their next game. So I want to hear um, his thoughts and uh, his hopes for the, for the girls this year. And then after that, we will have Carrie Ann Wellman, who is a kinder music teacher. So she is going to enlighten me about what exactly kinder music is. And um, so stay tuned. We're going to have a great show for you. And we'll be back. In just a moment. The People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. The fine people at Carmen Funeral Home have been working with families in need for over 100 years. Carmen Funeral Home offers compassionate and caring services to those in their time of need, from prearrangement to final arrangements, with two convenient locations in Flatwoods and Russell, Carmen Funeral Home, putting people first since 1913. This is the Green Up Beacon News Magazine, a presentation of the Green Up Beacon and First in People's Bank and Trust. Also brought to you by Stoltz Pharmacy, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, Carmen Funeral Home, Meredith Chiropractic Office, and Tanya Pullen, State Representative. Your host today, Brittany Hoback, along with co-host Tank Bond, and editor and producer Keith Adkins. This is an exclusive presentation of the Green Up Beacon greenupbeacon.com and greenupbeacon2.com. All right, everybody, we are back. And as you can hear, we are at the McConnell House today and a train is going by. So we're just going to give that just a few seconds to blow its whistle in <laughs> before we get started. Um, but I wanted to let everyone know um, that we really want to thank the McConnell House for letting us uh, come down here and, and do our show. It's a beautiful home, and we're going to try to switch the rooms around every time uh, and uh, give you a different view of this, this beautiful house. So today I'm here with Sean Moore, who is the Russell Middle School principal. So Sean, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Brittany. Um, graduated from Russell Schools in 1991. I'm a, I attended Russell Middle School, or all the Russell Schools. Started at Advance, went to McDowell, then the middle school, then the high school. Mm -hmm. Uh, graduated in 91 from there I went to uh, Ashland Community Technical College mm -hmm. did two years there transferred to Moorhead ended up graduating from Moorhead with a degree in social studies okay. um, while I was at Moorhead uh, kind of bounced around as far as what degree I wanted to do I watched sure. this movie called Silence of the Lambs and thought <laughs> I want to be an FBI profiler and you know eventually they say which would be cool would be a great job <laughs> would be a great job and uh, eventually said that you've got, got to graduate so I love Loved history, loved social studies, ended up getting my teaching degree, uh, came back, did my student teaching at Boyd County, mm -hmm. was hired there, taught at Boyd County for a while, uh, taught at Greenup County, uh, coached football there, and then in 97, uh, excuse me, 98, 99, I was hired back at Russell as a special ed teacher, okay. and then 99 to 2000, uh, that first year was my first year in regular education, and then I taught from... Um, until 2011 uh, and then I moved into a Dean of Students half-day teaching position and then 2012 was full-time Dean slash counselor mm -hmm. and then last year was my first year as principal at the um, middle school and so I'm starting on my second year um, along the way I was uh, was able to pick up two master's degree the, the, thanks to the state of Kentucky. Which is nice. Uh, yes, they uh, changed the requirements midstream, so I ended up with a master's in counseling and, and a master's in um, leadership, educational leadership, principal certification. Um, and again, I mentioned when I got the principal's job, um, and, and I mentioned about the FBI, my original goal, even in 2001, I was said I'd been appointed as a special agent with the FBI, I was waiting to leave, oh, and wow. then. Uh, I found out I was too short, fat, slow, and old to pass the physical, and so I ended up back in, t you know, back. But originally, I thought, okay, this is ready to go, uh, and it's been the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I've loved every minute uh, of Minute Russell, and uh, joke about all the time, you know, it's like living on the family farm, uh, because having attended school there, 
uh, and working there now, you know, as I walk through the middle school, you know, if you, I can remember those times, the good times I've had there. I can remember the times I was taken to the woodshed there where was, uh, with, yeah. with Mr. Gross and those sort of situations <laughs> when I may have misbehaved. And uh, so it's, it's been a great situation uh, to be back at Russell School. Well, that's fantastic. It is nice when you've got this hometown feel. And I think that that sort of gives you a, a little bit of a advantage, mm -hmm. I think, when you're dealing with the community and you're dealing with the parents, things like that, especially when you, you know, live next to mm -hmm. one and <laughs> your parents grew up with them or something like that. So it, it kind of gives you, an, like I said, a nice advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've been a principal, so this is your second year now. Second year, and, and uh, it's been the best year I've had so far. Well, that's my has been a principal. Russell's a fantastic so, school. So, <laughs> so, 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 so. so yours is a principal. Um, so let me, uh, let's just go into a little bit about how is it different to, I guess, be a principal to middle school right. versus the high school or versus the primary or intermediate? Like, what sort of challenges do you have there? Uh, uh, the biggest thing, uh, doing the transition from the high school to the, the middle school, uh, was adjusting the mindset of dealing with, and, and this is where I got credit to Mr. Casto and, and Ms. Thompson. And they're talking to the, my best friend's talking to the new student today instead of me. Mm -hmm. And I feel left out. Uh, and so that's some of the things, having to learn those relationship things, those mean girl things, oh, you know, yeah. uh, kind of on Wednesday when we were pink and everything else. Uh, no, I swear. Yes. Uh, so right there the, and uh, yeah. just uh, right there with the, uh, um, just getting used to, to the idea that relationships are so important because by having a high school student, uh, and working there, uh, by the time they're in the high school, they're usually able to deal with those, or, or it's more of a, they don't like me, oh well, they'll get over it type deal. So just getting used to that. Um, curriculum from the high school to the middle school, uh, and you could go all the way down to the primary. Uh, Russell's not going to be, no difference, teachers are holding those kids to high standards uh, in each class. So that, that doesn't change, just maybe the content. Sure. Now I, I have uh, three kids, and they have, they're all in high school now, but I remember those middle school days. I mean, uh, especially with, well, I'd like to say uh, maybe with the girl, but I tell you what, I, I experienced a lot with the boys too. I, you know, I have twins, and and there was an right. interesting sort of, you know, right. back and forth with the boys, and like I said, and fitting right. in, and that is a really important time mm -hmm. for those kids to sort of figure out. You know, I think it's a big jump from right. the fifth grade and then the sixth grade to right. be with sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. It's right. kind of a wild time mm -hmm. for yourself <laughs> and then you know for the education process and, and it really is I mean it's it's amazing from watching just last year and, and the people in the building teachers in the building said you'll be amazed the sixth graders they would come over and, and by Christmas time they would return and they would be an inch and a half taller oh, yeah. <laughs> and they were their complete behavior had changed from we're playing tag in the cafeteria to okay uh, i'm going to try to get serious and stuff i'm going to sure. try to do a little better so mm -hmm. there is a maturity process that happens Absolutely. and when you see from a sixth grader to an eighth grader uh, and that's been one of the great things about being at the middle school and with the middle school um, it's a time when, you know, unfortunately with the high stakes we have in testing all the time and, and pushing kids and things, that the middle school, it sounds like it's kind of that last time they've got to truly be kids. Sure, because sure. we've got kids that are in eighth grade that are already thinking about, gosh, I want to be valedictorian. I want to be the, you know, I want to do this and that. And it's great that those kids are that motivated and stuff, but still at the middle school years, they are still trying to experience, what do I want to do? I want to be in orchestra this week, and next week I want to be a volleyball star. Uh, uh, and it's okay, we'll play soccer mm -hmm. with Coach Grizzle coming up exactly. next. You know, I mean, it's one of those things. So, and it's perfectly okay at the middle school. Sure. Now, it's funny that you yeah. say that, but I think I, as you uh, did in college, I still sort of bounced around <laughs> a lot. Um, I still am bouncing around. Exactly. I'm just, I don't know what I want to do when I grow up, you know, kind of approach to things, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so you mentioned uh, briefly about test scores. So test scores, obviously, is the way that the state and everybody gauges your performance. Now, Russell does very well uh, with uh, the test scores and very happy to have my kids go to Russell schools. So how did uh, they perform, I guess, last year? Because um, the test scores came out not too long ago. Right, uh, and across the district, and, and like you said, it's one component mm -hmm. of um, 
what makes Russell so special is sure. the test scores. Uh, the culture's great, the uh, test scores there this year. Uh, at the middle school, we ranked 72nd out of 329 schools. Uh, that put us in the 89th percentile. We missed being a distinguished school by 0.5%. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so we were, we were right on the cusp uh, of it, but we are a proficient progressing school. We, is, uh, we exceeded all of our areas, um, arts and humanities, mm -hmm. um, our, our practical living. Uh, they scored more points than is possible. The state only allows you 23 points, and people like Dr. Decker and Coach Ledingham, Coach Edwards, and uh, Coach Smith, um, taking that, we were able to get a 25.5 in those areas. So that, we did a great job uh, of bringing that along. Um, District-wide, uh, again, we are the 14th district in the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, that that's certainly an amazing, amazing feat. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are, I'm getting the signal from my right. boss over there that we're going to go ahead and take a break and then we'll be back and we'll talk about your goals for the upcoming year. And then also you have an interesting story about this McConnell house yes, uh, from whenever your son was here for a prom. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we will hear about that and we'll be back in just a second. Stoltz Pharmacy is now offering patients compounding for their prescription needs. Stoltz Pharmacy is the only pharmacy in the area that is PCCA certified. We can provide you with hormone replacement, neuropathy creams, scar creams, pediatric prescriptions, and we can even help you with your veterinarian needs. If you have any questions, please call 606-834-1052. That's 834-1052. Stoltz Pharmacy in Greenup Flatwoods in Wheelersburg. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stoltz Pharmacy. Meredith Chiropractic, you will enjoy state-of-the-art chiropractic facilities and discover the true wellness lifestyle. Dr. Terry Meredith is a member of Great Doctors of Chiropractic and has helped many in the Ashland area experience natural healing without surgery or drugs. If you're looking for a skilled chiropractic doctor, visit MeredithChiropractic.com, call 329-8158, or visit Dr. Meredith's office at 2120 Carter Avenue in Ashland. We're back, and again, I'm here with Sean Moore, who is the Russell Middle School uh, principal. So we were talking a little bit about the test right. grades, um, and again, that you are right next to that proficient right. level. Or uh, distinguished. 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 So you right. are proficient, so your next level is, is proficient. Right. There are several schools in the Russell District as right. far as that. And, and there's two, and I didn't catch you off, but there's actually, we have two distinguished schools, the primary mm -hmm. and the high school, we're each distinguished. Which is just fantastic. Right. Exactly. Especially when it comes to competing for jobs in today's Certainly. market. I mean, you've got to prepare these kids to, to go on to the next level. Right. So what are some goals that you have for your school this year and I guess in, in the future? You know, uh, each year we, we look and uh, this afternoon at three to four o'clock sitting down with our teachers and it's not just my goals. We have the mm -hmm. teachers work down and say, what do they want to see with Russell Middle School? Because in the end, they're the ones that's implemented. They're the ones that are putting it, and that's what every teacher there, I can't give them enough credit because not only did they say last week and we went over test scores, uh, last night we had a parent meeting, Explore Your Future Night. We had faculty and staff there. They're staying today three to four, and they're always looking at things to make us better. One of the things, of course, been a, well, also with the newspaper, uh, is increasing our writing plan. We want to, because we, we can't say it enough, if our students can write, they can be successful in Absolutely. every field uh, because that's one thing that they've got to do. So focus on developing a better writing plan. Uh, the other thing, and it was one of the, when I was hired, uh, thought I had something worked out last year, it kind of fell through because of the location we're in, kind of a rural area, um, is bringing Chinese, uh, the foreign language, to the, the middle school. With that being said, the board did make a commitment this year oh, that we actually have added Spanish Mm -hmm. uh, at the middle school level. Now, we've been great about allowing our students to go over to the high school and take sure. Spanish, but this is the first time in a number of years that Russell Middle School has a full-time Spanish teacher. Uh, she's math Spanish in Miss Hunt, yes. uh, and it's been great. The kid, kids are loving it. So may not be Chinese, but our students, if they're learning a foreign language, it's going to help them throughout their life. Absolutely. And, and it's so important to learn that foreign language right. earlier. Right. And uh, it'd be nice if even once you got that program established, to even push it down right. to even the, the younger grades because their minds are such sponges right. then. And uh, it it's, would be really nice right. to come out and be able to speak two languages, especially right. you know, Spanish and even the Chinese right. is, it's coming. And, right. and everybody, especially when you go to those other countries, right. are bilingual. Right. They speak their native and then they speak English. Right. And sometimes, and a, you know, 
another one. And so um, even when my husband and I were in um, England, uh, we had sat next to um, a Germany couple who was getting there watching the uh, World Cup, which was interesting. And so I painted the German flag on my face. But they knew like four languages, and they wow. started so young. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's something that's very important. I think wow. that it's a really neat uh, push as one of your goals to get Spanish and then, of course, Chinese. Wow. Uh, put into the school system, which is, like I said, a really good move there. And about the writing, with the Twitter posts and the Facebook posts, it seems like everybody, they, when I, my kids, I say writing to them, they're like, well, it's 140 characters, I'm good. <laughs> and you're like, no, that's not how it works. Yeah, it, <laughs> exactly. It begins with a capital letter and then with punctuation, <laughs> exactly. and then in the between, there's a subject, a verb, and then exactly. they get it all Oh, I know, so. I preach it all the time at my right. home, just like, you guys have got to, to look past the Twitter and the Facebook posts and, and really start reading and writing right. something with some substance. Right. And, and that's why I mentioned the writing. That goes back to, um, you know, B.F. Kidwell, the first superintendent at Russell. Mm -hmm. I mean, that our motto there is a, a tradition of excellence. Uh, and, and I think if, if he came in as far as what he's seen with writing today, I'm hoping in some of our teachers he would see, and I'm sure what the same thing that he was teaching that first schoolhouse, he's seeing today. The building may be different, the things may be different, but they're still focusing on those writing exactly. skills. Because the foundation is still the foundation. Science has changed, social studies changed, but math and writing pretty much holds the same way. Exactly, so. exactly. Right. So again, everybody, we are at the McConnell House, and as we were getting ready to do this interview, you were telling me that your son and a group of his friends, um, you rented this place out for a prom right. or after prom. Right. Um, so you have a little bit of an interesting uh, story that goes along with being here. Right. So why don't you tell us about that? Right, so uh, my son Tyler, his senior year, looking for something a little different for prom. Mm -hmm. uh, so we decided to rent the McConnell house for him and a group of his friends. And, and actually in this room, and, and my wife and several other ladies came and, and we had everything set up with tables and probably about this spot. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, maybe on the next show you'll have the door there. Exactly. And, and we were in the back kind of preparing things and, and all of a sudden we hear this Ah, scream and everything else and I guess uh, we, we came back in to kind of see what happened but there's a door right behind Mr. Bond that mm -hmm. just opened uh, and, and the, the, I sort of call them students because they were also my students at the time but sure. the kids in the room that they, they were the door opened and there was no one there so you know the, and so that when that door came open and still today uh, that when they get together that's one of the things they talk about <laughs> is that that door open mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, you know green county paranormal research association <laughs> or ghost hunters mcconnell I, I you know i have some students in my building that are semi-pro ghost hunters sure. they haven't had the full class yet i guess uh -huh. to come out and this may be the may be the place to to have been to come to come exactly. look for that and right before halloween that may be right it will going be the on place right to go now, yeah so. doors opening and right all that there, stuff on their own strange strange things happen exactly so, <laughs> it's that time of year yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate the interview and your time, of course, to come down here and, okay. and chat with us. And good luck with uh, with everything uh, as principal and, of course, with the school and test scores and all that fun jazz. Okay. Uh, well, I appreciate you having me, and I can't say enough about the quality uh, faculty and staff we have at Russell Middle School every day. That's why I'm able to come down here because I know the building's safer. Sure. Uh, with me here, safe with me here or there. Safer with me. Safer with me. I started to say that, but I'll leave it for someone else to say, to say that. So. <laughs> Well, thank you again very much. And next up, we have Joe Grizzle, who is the high school coach, girls soccer coach. I mean, it was, you know how that the order of that. <laughs> and we're going to hear all about his uh, his girls and how well they've done. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. First and People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. At Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, our patients are priority number one. For the seventh straight year, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital has received HealthGrade's Outstanding Patient Experience Award. The hospital continues to place in the top 5% of the nation for outstanding patient experience. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital says thank you to our patients for this People's Choice honor. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, on a mission of good health for you and your family. 
The fine people at Carmen Funeral Home have been working with families in need for over 100 years. Carmen Funeral Home offers compassionate and caring services to those in their time of need, from pre-arrangement to final arrangements, with two convenient locations in Flatwoods and Russell. Carmen Funeral Home, putting people first since 1913. All right, everybody, we are back, and I'm here with Joe Grizzle, who is the Russell High School girls soccer coach. Now, before we get started into how well the girls have been doing, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, uh, exactly what you want to know. My, well, I mean, are, are you from the background? <laughs> well, I guess as much as you want to tell. tell. Yes, I've grown up here all my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Russell schools. Uh, I... Start, didn't start teaching until later on in life. Actually, mm -hmm. I worked at, uh, well, everywhere I've worked at has actually been bought out by someone. So oh, no. I was kind of scared when I started teaching because I was afraid maybe Russell would be taken over by <laughs> some of the other <laughs> knows, uh, school yes. systems. But uh, I started out, uh, I worked at a place that is non-existent now. It was the Corral Drive-In. Mm -hmm. Worked there during high school. Worked at a grocery store called Must Setters. That okay. No longer exists. <laughs> and uh, went on from there. Worked at uh, Armco Steel, which is now AK Steel mm -hmm. because they kind of got bought out. Sure. And went from there to Ashland Oil Refinery that became Marathon. Yes. And so uh, at about 50, Ashland Oil wanted to move me to uh, St. Paul. Mm -hmm. or to Texas City, Texas, and I didn't want to go to either one of sure. those places. So I went back, got my teaching certificate, and started teaching at Russell at about 50. And actually, Sean Moore was my uh, uh, mentor. No kidding. And uh, I did my uh, stint of my KTF teaching uh -huh. under uh, Mr. Moore. And uh, he made me what sure. I was. So uh, you, you went back to school at 50? <laughs> That is that's pretty uh, yes. commendable. You know, yes. I, I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine being 50 and then going back to school. I I'm, already feel like I'm being run over by technology as it is. It was <laughs> it was uh, yes it was a strain at first. But, sure. Uh, I, and my wife tells me this all the time, but I'm bad at once I go into something, I go all in. Oh yeah, well that's a and, that's a good thing to to, to and be. I, though. I block yeah. everything else out, so I just <laughs> had to kind of do that with sure. school and. So, well, that's very cool. Ahead. So now, what do you teach now? I actually am retired now. Oh, you're retired, retired now. And, okay, so uh, you're just a soccer coach. This past Doing January, very well. I retired and uh, loving it. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> still, still coaching. Yeah. And that's maybe good for some and bad for others, but. Uh, <laughs> well, I would say it's probably a good thing because your girls have done very well. So, how long have you been the girls' soccer coach? At the high school level, uh, 16 years. This 16 is my 16th years. year. That's great. So you've got a lot of talented girls this year. Um, my kids have been going to the games, and um, again, they don't have any idea how soccer works. But this is the fact that you guys are winning and doing so great. Um, they've just been going there to support um, support you guys. So on Monday night, you had a is it was it a regional game or a sectional game? Uh, well, they used to call it subsection, and now they have these different names, you know, semi-state and things of that sort. But it's the first, it's, it's like in basketball, the Sweet 16. Okay. It's that first game of state. Okay. And then you advance on, like, um, we will be going down Saturday for what would be called the Elite Eight. Okay, perfect. So now, on Monday night's game, you guys won pretty heavy-handedly. Uh, it was a 10 to nothing victory, which was just, which was amazing. Uh, unheard of. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the girls are uh, very focused, have stayed focused all year. We've got a good core of seniors that uh, have taken on a leadership role. They've which done is very important. Really, yes, mm -hmm. they've done a really great job. But, you know, they start working in June mm -hmm. as soon as school's out, and we go through the hard conditioning program, and, you know, these, these girls work hard, mm -hmm. and... Uh, they're dedicated and, and they compete, uh, you know, as hard as they can once they get out on the field. So the, it makes the, it easy for me. Sure, sure. The cardiovascular endurance that these girls have is just unbelievable. I think that soccer, in my opinion, would probably be one of the hardest. You know, in football, you run for a little bit and then you hit someone and then the play is over and you all walk back to the middle. But in soccer, it is just continuous running. 
Yeah, and, and, and it makes it harder because there's no timeout. Sure. I mean, the only, only timeout is if someone gets injured and they drag them off the field, then you, <laughs> you keep on playing. But, sure. uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's 80 minutes of just, you know, you, yeah. nonstop. We were watching the uh, World Cup just this year, and a lot of those games went into extended time. So it's another 15 minutes onto that, and then another 15 minutes onto their play time. Yes. It's just, I couldn't believe that. We've been in a couple of those situations. Luckily now, they have cut that time down. I mean, we used to go to two 10-minute overtimes, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter who scored, you still went on. And then you went to a five-minute sudden death. If no one scored, you went to another five minutes. Oh, down. my goodness. No one scores, and you went in at penalty kicks. And, you know, you're into a hundred and some minutes. Of, and that's a long soccer. weeknight game. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you go straight into a uh, five-minute uh, sure. sudden death. Which is nice. So now you guys have a game on Saturday at 6 o'clock, and it's in Lexington. Do you know who you'll be playing? Uh, yes, we play at Lafayette High School, and we'll be playing the number one team in Kentucky, okay. uh, Notre Dame. Okay. We played them last year when we were lucky enough to uh, reach that stage, and uh, so we get to see them again this year. Sure, yeah. sure. And if you win, which I hope you do, um, what is the, I guess, what's the next step? That would be the, I guess, what you call the Final Four. Okay. And uh, that's hopefully where we'll... Now, is that we'll also in Lexington? Place. That would will also be in Lexington. Will you yeah. stay or will you go back down for the week? No, we'll the next go week? back down. You'll go back down. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Um, just a little bit, I guess, we'll talk about your philosophy on winning. How do you get the girls from the state in June to how they are now? I mean, what, what's, your, what's your main meat and potatoes there? Well, uh, again, it's, it's mainly the girls. I mean, they are just, you know, you, you try to, and it, it is hard to keep focus going sure. because it is such a long uh, period but when you've got good leaders that uh, uh, keep that going I mean I've got some again my seniors uh, you know Shelby Huddleston, Lexi Frisbee and uh, Alexis McMonagall and uh, Kara Mayer they're just uh, they keep everybody's drive going and uh, I think that helps out a coach more than anything when you have those good leaders. Sure. And you know it is a long season but they work hard they stay dedicated and uh, they see the payoff. And I Absolutely. Think after going as far last year, and you know we won nine regions, uh, and and they look at that history, and I think there's a little pride there that they, they absolutely carry want on to and, carry that and on. They want to keep, yeah, they want to keep that tradition going. So. Yeah, absolutely. So now you have four seniors, is that right? Yes. Just four, and then so hopefully we have some. Uh, underclassmen that's going to rise up next year and, and take on those leadership roles and make your job easy as well next year. Yes, I believe so. We've got uh, good juniors. We've got four juniors. I think they'll uh, they'll step up. Well, that's next fantastic. Year as well. well, Coach, I wish you all the best of luck uh, on Saturday at six, and we'll be following. I know I've been f sort of following the progress on Facebook. I'm I'm friends with Alexis Smith uh mom, oh, yeah. so she's always yeah. posting and. Exactly and uh, Susan Freed, she's always got all oh, the, yeah. the latest oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, At Facebook, you know, exactly. you, you got to stay in tune with that. Yeah, exactly, and that's how <laughs> that's how I do follow us, especially when it comes to the sports like that that, that yeah. my kids don't play, that uh, watch and, and, and see how everybody's doing. So mm -hmm. I wish you all the best of luck, and uh, and we may have you back. Hopefully we'll win, and, and we'll talk about maybe some strategies, and mm -hmm. or like I said, next year we'll, we'll uh, talk about some preseason stuff. Appreciate being here. All right. I want to ask about condition, Joe. Since mm -hmm. it is a continuous game, yes. What 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 type of conditioning do you use? Oh, we do. Uh, we'll trade back and forth. Like one day we'll do uh, a long distance, maybe a three four mile run, and we do a lot of uh, sit ups, a lot of push ups. We do weight lifting. Uh, we'll do sprints because there is a lot of uh, back and forth motion mm -hmm. in soccer, mm -hmm. and we just kind of switch it up and. Uh, we do a little CrossFit exercises, and uh, we do it every day, uh, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I definitely have seen a lot of the girls uh, running on their own, even before June. I'm talking like early May, uh, April out there, and you know that they're running for oh, yeah, they soccer to, practice. They get ready, yes, yes. Which, yeah. which makes, again, which makes it good. I mean, when they're able to do those things on their own, sure, it shows that they really do... Uh, yeah, I'm always driving school. down Diedrich and yeah, I see a lot of them um, mm -hmm. there preseason or just on, like I said, on their own, um, which is really nice to see. Oh, yeah. Exactly, yeah. that they're getting conditioned before the conditioning. <laughs> 
Definitely. Well, again, thank you very much for coming today. And next up, we have Carrie Ann Wellman, who is with uh, Kinder Music. So again, she's going to let me know what exactly Kinder Music is, and we'll talk about that, and, and then, of course, about her connection to the area. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. At Meredith Chiropractic, you will enjoy state-of-the-art chiropractic facilities and discover the true wellness lifestyle. Dr. Terry Meredith is a member of Great Doctors of Chiropractic and has helped many in the Ashland area experience natural healing without surgery or drugs. If you're looking for a skilled chiropractic doctor, visit MeredithChiropractic.com, call 329-8158, or visit Dr. Meredith's office at 2120 Carter Avenue in Ashland. Stoltz Pharmacy is now offering patients compounding for their prescription needs. Stoltz Pharmacy is the only pharmacy in the area that is PCCA certified. We can provide you with hormone replacement, neuropathy creams, scar creams, pediatric prescriptions, and we can even help you with your veterinarian needs. If you have any questions, please call 606-834-1052. That's 834-1052. Stoltz Pharmacy in Greenup Flatwoods in Wheelersburg. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stoltz Pharmacy. The fine people at Carmen Funeral Home have been working with families in need for over 100 years. Carmen Funeral Home offers compassionate and caring services to those in their time of need, from prearrangement to final arrangements. With two convenient locations in Flatwoods and Russell, Carmen Funeral Home, putting people first since 1913. All right, everybody, we are back, and we just finished up our interview with Joe Grizzle, and want to make sure that we extend a good luck to the girls on Saturday when they play in Lexington. So next up, I have Carrie Ann Wellman, who is a kinder music, is it a teacher? Educator, instructor. There you go. <laughs> Extraordinaire. Yeah. Of course, you have to put <laughs> that like afterward. That. Exactly. <laughs> now, Carrie, why don't you just start off and tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, I hear that you're from the area. I am. Um, I grew up here. I graduated from Raceland in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are Warren and Ruthie Rogers, celebrities in the Green Up area, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, uh, I went to Marshall after I um, graduated from Raceland. I got a degree in speech therapy okay. and a minor in psychology. And the day after I graduated from Marshall, which I was pregnant with twins at the time, um, I started grad school. And I'm uh, one class away from finishing my master's degree in special education and um, early elementary education right now. Um, I got married in 2012 and moved to um, Wayne County, West mm -hmm. Virginia, the Huntington area. And um, I have almost one-year-old twins. I'll be one year old uh, in two weeks. And so, wow. Um, so, a, you are super busy. I am very busy. I also have a um, all natural organic skincare line that I make for my home and sell. Oh, no. We're going to have to talk about that, too. <laughs> um, it's, called, it's called Apothecary. Uh -huh. um, and then I'm also a wellness advocate for doTERRA essential oils. So, I'm very holistic minded, very natural minded, um, chemical free. So, I like it. Adding that to the resume also. And then, in addition to Kinder Music. So, I am. I'm very busy. Yeah. <laughs> What's good? It, yeah. It, it keeps yeah. your, your mind sharp and, and you know tuned into all the stuff that's going on but I, yeah we'll definitely talk okay. about your skincare line I've okay. been you know trying every day or as I can to make progress or to eating organic and yeah. of course I have a garden and it's yeah. all organic I mean I went I think two years ago into I'm not putting any more chemicals than I have to you mm -hmm. know yeah. um, so grow a lot of the stuff and just use good old cow manure yeah. and <laughs> You put that neem oil and all that fun stuff. So and that elbow grease. Exactly. And a lot of it does, it does take a lot more time. Yeah, because you do have to pay attention because sometimes when disease processes on plants right. really get a hold, it really takes off. And then that's when, you know, I have to call in the dogs and be like, okay, I've yeah. got to put, you know. But I really, really try not to um, because it, I think that's got a lot to do with a lot of things that are going on yeah, with people and, and their health concerns these it days. It's just all the terrible garbage <laughs> put oh, into ourselves. Yeah. Yes. All right. So um, your twins, we'll talk yes. a little bit about because I have twins. I'm a oh. stepmom, but um, they, uh, I've been with them since they've been 10 and they're 17 now. So they're ready to go off to college. Okay. And it's definitely been, and I went to where I never wanted to have kids at all mm -hmm. to inheriting three and they're wonderful. Mm -hmm. But um, the twin thing was, was, is, is, well, it is different. Yeah. And, and, and my two are complete polar opposites oh, of really? each other. 
and and there's part of me that's really thankful for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know that I do have two individuals in a, instead of two redheads that are yeah. always into right. into you know mischievous things or uh, you know Andrew is is all boy in football and video games and we're just kind of like you got to get your schoolwork done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think they definitely um, at least mine. I mean I wouldn't say that they're opposites, but they do. You know, one's very calm, mild mannered. Mm-hmm. My little boy, he's super laid back, and my little girl, she's high strung and just so needy all the time sure. and it's you know it's a balance it's a balance where it evens out to where I mean it's a full-time job regardless but exactly exactly so um let's I guess start off this whole conversation is what on earth is kinder music <laughs> okay well um I made the decision to um to quit my job when I found out I was pregnant with twins mm-hmm. like I said I'm very holistic minded I didn't want any health complications sure um I actually um had the babies at home at home birth um, I didn't even see a doctor, mm-hmm. so I knew that nutrition was key for me. So my husband and I, we decided that I was going to quit my job, mm-hmm. and um, I was just going to stay home and focus on being healthy and getting through school. Um, so that was a huge step for us. He's a teacher, so that was a huge step for us. Um, so once the babies got to be about three or four months old, I started thinking, I'm going to have to be really creative in what I do now because I'm nearing the end of my degree. Sure. We need a second income. What am I going to do? I can't go back to school to work full time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got really creative and I you know, went to Kinder Music and Russell um, at the We Wisdom there and Kinder Music just came to my mind and it just kind of stuck and, and it's been great so far. Um, we're in our second week of class right now Great. Um, and I have about seven enrolled which is a pretty good number for a beginning program. Uh-huh. Um, but Kinder Music basically, um, don't let the name fool you, it's not just about music, it's an overall developmental mm-hmm. um, program and they use music as the vehicle to foster overall development. So um, when when a brain hears music, the entire brain illuminates. Every yes, aspect I've seen that. of it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. In an MRI or an EEG you mm-hmm. would see the entire brain light up when, when you hear music. So the key is for learning to engage as many of the senses as possible. So in kinder music we play music, we learn the sing lyrics, we dance, we play so not only Get all that blood flowing. <laughs> yes, yes, to exercise the brain. So not only is the brain illuminated through music, but then we also with each activity there's um, I guess you'd say hidden hidden sure. lessons behind each activity that um, focuses and stimulates further different mm-hmm. parts of the brain. So, you know, we're working on um, English and language and speech with our lyrics to our songs and when we dance we're adding balance and movement coordination, sure. hand eye coordination. Um, we add we add in foreign languages. Um, Kinder music is over 30 years old. We're in 70 countries worldwide. Great. Um, two million families have experienced Kinder music and loved it. And um, so we incorporate, you know, the world as a whole. We add a lot of American Sign Language, mm-hmm. and this starts from newborn and goes to age seven. Which is just fantastic. Eight. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's very good to kind of hone in on the relationship between caregiver and child. I'm. We, we call ourselves educators because I'm not necessarily a teacher like, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> it's a, okay, watch me do this and make your own form of it. Yeah. So it, it's very good. It's a very intimate time for the caregiver and the child, and it's all about sure. them. And um, I'm able to, with my training with kinder music, I'm able to um, adapt the lesson plan that, that has been created and, and researched. I'm able to adapt that to adjust to different learning needs and abilities and age groups. And, and what type of children you have. Yeah, yeah learning styles. Because it can be extremely different. Yeah, well, I'm teaching a family class right now, and so I have I have three months old to four years old in the same class, and that sounds almost impossible, but, <laughs> but kinder music has pre- prepared me very well to um, to come over here and work with this family and work with this family sure. and, and as a whole and, and just create an overall class that, that everybody benefits from. Now you said that Kindred Music has been around for 70? 30. 30 years. Yeah. It's We're 70, 70 countries. countries. Okay, yeah. for 30 years. So this is something that they obviously have developed mm-hmm. and tested and, yes. and is stuck. So yes. th- there must be some proven right. results here yeah. that, that well, the sort of... Um, studies show that 30 minutes of Kindred Music a week leads to a 32% literacy gain across the board. Can and that's that. extraordinary. That's absolutely. absolutely extraordinary. And, um, you know, our classes are 30 to 35 minutes every week. Mm-hmm. Um, the good thing about our program is that you can jump in at any time, in the middle of the month, the beginning of the month, whenever right. you want to come, you can come. Um, and it's just, it's, just a, it's just a great program. I'm absolutely in love with it. We sing, we dance, we play. And the kids are none the wiser to what we're, we're to the, the learning. 
sneak it in some yeah. facts there. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, you've got your, your active kids who are, are able to release their energy. It's not like your typical story time where we sit down in a circle and we... Sure. It's very rigid. It's not rigid at all. It's, hey, if you want to go run around the room, go for, go it. for it. You're, you're going to be listening because we're engaging all the senses. So. Yeah. Which definitely benefits. Yeah. So now, is there a minimum age requirement? No. For no. kinder music? And is no. there a maximum age requirement? Seven. Seven, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So you're saying you had a family with a three month old mm -hmm. to a four year old, which is very yeah. interesting. And so the kinder music program, typically, how long does that last? I mean, is there, like, do you stop? Till age seven. Till age seven. Yeah. So, I mean, like, so right now you have your class with seven kids and. I mean, is it something that you that you apply and go in monthly and then? Well, we, we go in semesters. Okay, um, semesters. I'm following the new model. I know we have a local, another local kinder music studio in Russell. Okay. And um, and so we we go by semesters. So we'll start in in the fall and then end in the in May Mayish, and then we'll start back in the ne in the next fall. But like I said, op we have open enrollment, so you can jump in and jump out at any time. Super. Well, we're going to take a break and then we'll be back in just a moment and we'll continue talking about kinder music and then, um, I said, just keep enlightening me. This is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks. Stoltz Pharmacy is now offering patients compounding for their prescription needs. Stoltz Pharmacy is the only pharmacy in the area that is PCCA certified. We can provide you with hormone replacement, neuropathy creams, scar creams, pediatric prescriptions, and we can even help you with your veterinarian needs. If you have any questions, please call 606-834-1052. That's 834-1052. Stoltz Pharmacy in Greenup Flatwoods in Wheelersburg. More than you expect from a pharmacy. Stoltz Pharmacy. At Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, our patients are priority number one. For the seventh straight year, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital has received Health Grade's Outstanding Patient Experience Award. The hospital continues to place in the top 5% of the nation for outstanding patient experience. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital says thank you to our patients for this People's Choice Honor. Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, on a mission of good health for you and your family. All right, everybody, we are back. And again, I'm here with Carrie Ann Wellman, who is the kinder music instructor slash teacher, educator, <laughs> whichever. <laughs> I don't think we want to call it a teacher, right. so, because I think a lot of kids would be like, oh, I don't want to go. Teacher, and, yeah. Exactly. So um, we'll just... Facilitator. Uh, facilitator. <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit about kinder music and, exact, and how it works and um, about the age, I guess, requirements mm -hmm. from, you know, zero to seven years old. Now, do you meet um, several times a week, once a week? We meet once a week. Okay. Like I said earlier, classes are usually 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. Um, I have two locations, one in Greenup, one in Cannonsburg. Okay. Um, our Cannonsburg location is at Heritage Freehold Baptist. That's my home church. Okay. And then we actually meet right over here at the Extension Office on Tuesday evenings, and classes are at 530. Okay. Um, really laid back, really stress-free, just hang out, run around. Sure and learn at the same time. So. Which is just fantastic. Yeah. And we'll make sure when we uh, close here to give phone numbers sure, out yeah. and all that fun stuff so that people can find you yeah. and hopefully be a part of this great program because I, I, you know, I said with 30 years of it, of yeah. it working. Internationally, they use, they use kinder music overseas to teach English. Yes, which is just, yeah. and as we were talking, when I was talking with uh, Sean yeah. Moore about the implementing of the foreign language at an earlier age yeah. would be key right. because that is when everybody yeah. starts learning it. When you're talking, when you go overseas, when you're in Europe, when you're, right. even, you know, when we travel to, to Central America and, and we were in Peru, everybody there knows both languages. Yeah. And it's not just because, you know, the English language you know, we travel a lot, but I mean, it's just because it you need it yeah. to, to get... It's not just good for language skills, mm -hmm. it's good for your brain also. It, Absolutely. It, it, it uh, strengthens your brain. Sure. And when you're younger like that, that oh, yeah. your brain is such a sponge, yeah. I'd give anything for it to work like that yeah. again. Because <laughs> I definitely am like reading things two and three times and being like, okay, Brittany, focus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the same way. All right, so how exactly were you trained to become a kinder mus music uh, facilitator? Like, what was the training um, Well, process? I had to audition. Um, I had to sing for <laughs> <laughs> for a, um, a woman who's employed by kinder music. So once she passed me 
Uh -huh. um, along, I, I entered into a training stage. It was all online. Okay. Um, I got to work at my own pace. Um, I worked several hours a day, um, whenever I could. When sleepless nights, you know. Sure. Grad school, you know. All the my twins, the and twins, yeah. your house, and exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it, you know, I, I pulled many a all nighter trying oh, to get sure. this stuff done. Um, so I had to write papers, I had to take quizzes, essays, um, did a lot of research on childhood development, sure. the correlation between music and movement, um, differentiated learning styles and learning abilities, which of course ties into my degrees that I already have. So exactly. I feel extra qualified to teach kids. There you go. <laughs> um, and so then actually at the beginning of October, um, I traveled to North Carolina to Kenner Music Headquarters and I met with all my advisors and um, the people who actually write the lessons for Kenner Music all the time in the revision process so these mm -hmm. ladies are going over this constantly and um, so I met with them they gave me advice one-on-one -on -one help um, encouragement um, help with starting my business what things sure. to do and, and what not to do I actually got to meet with the president of Kinder Music International which, which was phenomenal always cool. how many people can say that they met with the president and CEO of the company exactly that they, <laughs> they worked for so that was pretty neat he you know shared with me some goals of his and what he would like to see happen with not only my business but Kinder music as a whole, yeah, exactly. Even internationally, so yes. it was it was a it was a wonderful opportunity. Sure. Now, do you have like conventions yearly? Um, we have on, we have ongoing trainings. Sure. Um, they usually try to have like a face to face event is what they call it. Once mm -hmm. a year, you earn points to continue your education with Kinder music. You have to earn so many points per year um, for that. But as far as like conferences, no, mm -hmm. most of the training is online, but they are starting to incorporate like balance between the two. So. Sure, sure. Which, but but if given the opportunity, I would definitely go, I yeah. would definitely go to a conference again. Exactly. I had a blast. <laughs> sure, especially I mean, if you're tying in all the, the international yeah. uh, programs, it yeah. would be, be a really neat thing, I right. think, to yeah. sort of get great. everybody's different, you know, take on it and, yeah. and, and how they do it in, in a different country with a different language right. and incorporating several lang languages definitely. into one program, which yeah. would be really interesting. That's great. Um, so so what I guess what are some of the benefits of kinder music to children? Well, like I mentioned earlier, the literacy game. Mm -hmm. um, we we develop the whole child. Um, emotional, you know, children at a young age are like Sean was talking about earlier, sorting through all those emotions. Uh, we help sort those. Sure. Uh, we give interaction uh, to the moms who are stay-at-home moms or you know moms who may not may maybe new to the area and don't have a lot of friends. That mm -hmm. it gives the moms opportunities to um, to interact with each other. Um, or even just moms learning how to be a mom. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Advice, hey, can you help me out with this? Exactly. Um, it's just like a family type environment. It's very sure. relaxed, very laid back. Um, it's just overall, the whole child, when I say overall, I really mean that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, there's not one part of development that's not affected by kinder music in one way or another. Like I said, we incorporate American Sign Language. This last week I taught a lesson incorporating Hebrew words. Yeah, um, that's very cool. Yeah, we learned, we're on the farm this week, so uh -huh. we're learning about all the farm animals and we use the imagination. We do uh, hearing, vision. We just incorporate all the senses to just really stimulate that brain and get the get the blood going. Which is just fantastic. And while and we work out energy too. Exactly. <laughs> Which hey, what mom doesn't love? <laughs> right so before bedtime, go to work out the energy with yeah. kids so they go home, get their bath, and go right to sleep. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm still struggling trying to get my teenagers yeah. into bed. Yep. <laughs> Bring them on down. <laughs> <laughs> Wear them out, have them run around the building, do yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It would be super nice. So what is the future of kinder music, um, basically here within our community mm -hmm. um, and then also internationally? Um, well, I would like to see the future here. Um, obviously, I want my business to grow. Sure. Um, we have a lot of um, er opportunities in the area, you know, sports, dance, mm -hmm. um, but those are all competitively driven sports events. So kinder music is a place where you can come and you can belong. It's safe. There's no superiority. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a very safe, relaxing environment for parent and child. Um, so I, I think that that's really valuable. And we learn skills that can translate to sports, to dance, sure. to drama, to whatever, to whatever it is that we pursue. Music. Were, exactly. and, and as the old, as the kids get older, we learn how to uh, read music. I provide instruments. They play instruments, um, mm -hmm. piano especially. Sure. Um, so that you know that's invaluable in itself. Um, I would like to see my, my business grow, like I said, um, and I'd also like area daycares and preschools and early childhood facilities to invite me to come into their facilities and, um, and teach. We have a public school curriculum, too. Oh, wow. Um, that's that's yeah. neat. So that, I mean, it's relatively, you get a lot of bang for your buck when you hire a kinder music sure. facilitator to come in and, and do that because you get, you get all those benefits, the social, emotional, cognitive, motoric 
all those all those benefits all, those all together in one. exactly and it's in 30 35 minutes yeah, and you exactly. just you you've managed to get it all packed into a nice little compartment exactly. there exactly yeah so we're going to take one more commercial break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how someone finds you uh, okay. numbers and and all that fun stuff yeah. and um and then also about uh, the other things okay. that you have going on so cool. we'll be right back at meredith chiropractic you will enjoy state-of-the-art chiropractic facilities and discover the true wellness lifestyle. Dr. Terry Meredith is a member of Great Doctors of Chiropractic and has helped many in the Ashland area experience natural healing without surgery or drugs. If you're looking for a skilled chiropractic doctor, visit MeredithChiropractic.com, call 329-8158, or visit Dr. Meredith's office at 2120 Carter Avenue, in Ashland. All right, so we are back, and again, this is Carrie Ann Wellman with Kinder Music. So let's, if someone wants to come into your program, how do they, do they find you? Well, we're on Facebook, Kinder Music with Carrie. Woo! Kinder Facebook. Music with Carrie. <laughs> um, look us up, like us, share our, our um, statuses. We've got pictures on there that you can see. Send me a message if you've got any questions that I haven't answered today. Um, also, I'll give you a free class. Um, so you can come and try it out and find out if it's for you or not. Sure. Um, if you want to come watch, come watch. Um, let's see. We'll be at the Extension office next Tuesday at 530. Okay. Anybody's welcome. Um, Is there a phone meet, number? Yeah, okay. just my personal cell phone number. It's 304 730-2837. It's always hard when you have to recall your own cell phone number because yes. you never call it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And you have a website on there or mostly just on Facebook? I do have a website. It's not um, officially, it's, okay. uh, it's up and running, but it's not It's not finished yet. But it's kindermusic.com slash kindermusic with Carrie. So. All right, very, very cool. Um, let's talk just briefly um, about the other things that you do. So let's talk about your skincare product. Okay, it's skincare. called Apothecary. Okay. Um, I had a friend request me to make homemade sunscreen back in the spring uh -huh. and that just kind of started it all I made sunscreen and before you knew it I was making three or four hundred batches of sunscreen out of my kitchen <laughs> oh my so I decided that I was just going to start my own little hobby business so I actually sell my products at the wild ramp in downtown Huntington which is okay. an organic co-op up there okay I'm gonna write that down yeah. because that sounds I don't yeah it's all local it's all local um, produce local products everything's local it's a great great thing for our community um, so I sell there um, I have an apothecary Facebook page also I make custom orders I'm now I have lotions and um, deodorants and um, like uh, pregnancy like belly butter is what we sure, call it for sure. stretch marks and things like that diaper rash cream it's all organic and, uh, like, just, that's and, very and like eczema psoriasis relief yeah, too, absolutely. So it's great. So it's, um, how, what does the Facebook page call? Apothecary. Just Apothecary, mm -hmm. okay. And so we'll definitely have to go check that out. Yep. I, I, um, I have a basically a hobby business myself oh, where really? I sell alpaca products. Oh, cool. And so, you know, my stuff is fair trade. And of course, you know, the yeah. alpaca selling point is, is that you don't have to use the harsh chemicals like mm -hmm. you do in sheep's wool right. to process. Yeah. The, and then it comes in 22 beautiful colors and that the alpacas are a lot, they don't do as much damage to the land. Yeah. And um, so that's... It was kind of like you could sell at the wild ramp. Exactly. <laughs> so it was really nice to have you know to get into products that mm -hmm. have a really yeah. neat cultural tie, a fair trade and fair business sort of thing, and then also that it's just right. it does better for the environment. Yeah. Right? It's less of an impact as you know as hard you know right. cattle or things like yeah. that. And I have the essential oil business too. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a class next Thursday at Campbell Elementary here at okay. Graceland. Um, I think at three thirty um, on Thursday in the cafeteria there, or the library, one mm -hmm. of those big rooms, about essential oils and how you can replace all your medicines with essential with oils. Essential oils, I love so, it. I I've, love been, it. I've been medicine free for two years. Well, that is fantastic. So, yeah. it's, it, it's a great thing. It's doable, yeah, it really definitely. is. I mean, I, I, um, I went to medical school and was formally trained mm -hmm. in you know Western medicine, but oh, I'm telling yeah. you what, it was an osteopathic school, so mm -hmm. the good thing about that is that they were always preaching of, you know, returning the body back to its natural right. form so that it can therefore fix the Hell function. Itself. Yeah. And that is just a, a wonderful philosophy to have because it right. is true. Yeah, definitely. Um, that you just don't need to, there's not a pill for everything that if you just 
work on using alternative methods as, you know, the original methods, the, original <laughs> methods, like the yeah. Chinese methods of right. acupuncture and, and yeah. massage and all that stuff like that, that you can restore function, exactly. um, yeah. you know, back to, back to normal, back to, you know, a, a more optimal working uh, yeah. condition. Well, thank you so much for coming here today. You've, you've enlightened me with your music <laughs> and of course this uh, apothecary, yeah. uh, I'll be checking that out on yeah. Facebook and I may even have a custom order for you, Perfect. which would be, which would be great. So again, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. And I hope, really hope people come down and, and check out her class. But the first one is free, yeah, first which is free. super. <laughs> yeah. Get your kids involved and, and really incorporate all these different ways of learning and trick your kids into not only eating vegetables, but learning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Gotta, hide in, gotta hide it somewhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank and uh, next we're going to do our cooking segment. And I have made a banana nut bread, uh, which is my grandmother's starch recipe, and it has a nice little oat uh, topping on it. So mm-hmm. stay tuned for that. And again, if you need the recipe instructions and uh, ingredients list, it is on greenatbeacon.com and greenatbeacon2.com. Thank you, and we'll be right back. First and People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we're going to be making my grandmother Stern's famous banana nut bread. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the ingredients so you can get your pen and paper out and take the ingredients list down. But I also want to make sure that you guys are aware that you can get the ingredients to this and all of the other recipes on the website, which is greenitbeacon.com and greenitbeacon2.com. So in case you're just wanting to watch today and then maybe visit the site later and write the ingredients down, you can do it that way or we can do it right now. So this banana nut bread, again, the nut part is optional. You do not have to add any nuts, but I think it makes it taste a little bit better when you do. And I'm also going to start out this recipe by making an oat topping for the banana nut bread. Um, I think it gives a nice little texture to the top of the bread. So we are going to start with the ingredients for the oat topping. And to my page here. And for the oat topping, you're going to need one-fourth a cup of butter. And it's best if it's cold and then you're able to divide the butter into small little pats whenever you go to mix this up. You will need one half cup of flour, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth cup of brown sugar that is firmly packed into your measuring cup, and one half cup of oats. I also want to point out too, normally I always check the availability of my ingredients in my spice cabinet and in my cabinets before I get started and today I didn't and I was out of cinnamon. So I did a little bit of research and some of the other oat topping recipes call for, instead of cinnamon, they can use pumpkin pie spice or apple pie spice. So thankfully, I had both of them in my uh, spice cabinet. So I went ahead and substituted my cinnamon and made it uh, the apple pie spice, which has cinnamon and nutmeg and I think all spice in it. So I guess if you don't have it and you have one of these other ones in there, that it will pass and it will work well. So that is the ingredients for the oat topping. And I'm going to talk a little bit again about the ingredients for the banana nut bread. So first you will need one half cup of butter flavored shortening. I think this is a very critical part is that it's butter flavored. It makes it taste a lot better than just regular shortening. You will need one and one half cup sugar, two eggs, one half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and three fourths a teaspoon of baking soda two cups of flour, one half cup of buttermilk, or if you don't have buttermilk or you don't want to buy a large container of buttermilk, you can do one half cup or a little bit under of regular milk and then add um, a teaspoon and a half of white vinegar and that sort of mimics the buttermilk flavor. And then um, you have one and one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract and then you will need two cups or instead of doing the cup version it's about four or five ripe bananas. These bananas actually could stand to be a little bit riper. They tend to mash up a lot better when they when they are ripe but if you have regular yellow ones to go you can use that but even the more black spots on on the banana peel the better because that makes them uh, more ripe and easier to mash up. And then again if you want to make this a banana nut bread you can add uh, one cup of crushed nuts 
Today I'm going to use macadamia nuts because I was thinking about our trip to Hawaii uh, the other day and I thought, oh, macadamia nuts would be perfect in this banana <laughs> bread. Um, or you could use walnuts or, or pecans or you can just go ahead and omit it if you don't want the nut part added to your bread. So I'm going to start mixing up the uh, oat topping. And I have most of my ingredients already in this bowl. And again, that was the uh, fourth a cup of uh, brown sugar packed, one half cup of oats, one teaspoon cinnamon or apple pie spice or pumpkin pie spice, and one half cup of flour. And then I have my one quarter cup of butter here. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab a smaller spoon. Sorry about that. And put this in here in pieces. I'm go ahead and mix this up. And this mixture will look crumbly, and that's um, what you want it to look like, because you're going to sprinkle this on top of your banana nut bread batter. And again, this is something that you do not have to do. The banana nut bread tastes fine by itself. I got this recipe from my grandmother, and I want to take this opportunity to make sure to remind everybody that if you have a recipe from your grandmother or great aunt or even your mother, please make sure that you write them down because uh, my grandmother passed away, and the, the bad part about that was is that a lot of her recipes that she used for her blackberry cake and for her apple butter and uh, several other of her famous recipes, squirrel gravy and, and whatnot, she always did those recipes from memory. So there was actually no written record or um, basically running list of ingredients that she used for these recipes. So I was fortunate enough to get this banana nut bread recipe from her um, while she was still with us because I always made it in college. So I just wanna urge you guys that if you do have a recipe that you really like, someone in your family or your friend has made, make sure that you get it and put it in a safe place because lots of times these recipes are lost and it's such a shame because especially the old country recipes, uh, they're, they're fantastic. And every time I make this I think about my grandmother so it's always a good thing to, to use to, to remember them by. She was fantastic in the kitchen. So this is what the oat topping looks like and you can see it's it's got a crumbly nature to it. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside. And I'm going to go ahead and start making my banana nut bread. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And this recipe makes two loaves. So you want to make sure that you have two bread pans available. So we're going to start here with this recipe. And first, you need to take one half cup of butter flavored Crisco. And I found these adorable little things at the store the other day that actually have the cup measurements on the side here. So I will need one half cup. And that basically means I can cut this right in half. And then it comes with this adorable butter dish that you can just put your Crisco right back in. Go ahead and put our Let's go in there. And then we'll have one and one half cups of sugar. And I have measured that out already. Put that there. And then you will also need two eggs. I have my brown farm eggs here. I got this from a friend of mine who has chickens at their house. So I enjoy getting the benefits of that. Now you're going to want to go ahead and cream these ingredients together first. Make sure everything gets good and mixed. And you can do this with a spatula or a wooden spoon or whatever you find is easier. I like using a spatula in this recipe so I make sure to get every last bit of goodness out of the size of the bowl and into the pan. 
This banana nut bread never lasts long at my house. Kids love it. My neighbors love it because I usually say one loaf for us and then I usually give another loaf away. All right, so those ingredients have been creamed together. As you can see there, things mixed up nicely. And then we're going to go ahead and add our other dry ingredients. So this will be one half teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking powder and then three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. So to remember those are two different ingredients. I put them in my bowl here and I'll go ahead and dump them into my pan. And then we are also going to need two cups of flour, which I have here. I'm going to go ahead and give this a stir. Make a mess. <laughs> that's right, it's my kitchen. <laughs> I make the messes and I clean them up, so that's all right. <laughs> and if it was somebody else making the mess, I would probably get more upset about it. So I went ahead and cut these ingredients into our creamed sugar and shortening and eggs. And then here we're going to go ahead and add our one half cup of buttermilk. So again, I do not have buttermilk on hand, so I'm going to use regular milk and take that to just a little bit under a half cup. And then I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons or one half tablespoon, it's the same measurement, of white vinegar. Afraid I'm gonna overdo this. There's one teaspoon. And there's the half. All right, so this right here will mimic the actual taste of the buttermilk. Go ahead and add that in. Give her a stir. I remember getting this recipe from my grandmother and she gave it to me over the phone and she said buttermilk. And at that time, I had absolutely no idea what buttermilk even was. And of course, then when you had to go to the store, you had to, to buy it. So I actually did buy it the first time. And it came in like a half gallon or something like that. And so I figured, well, I've never had buttermilk before. <laughs> I'll go ahead and give it a taste. And needless to say, I called her back and said, is there any way I can avoid buying that whole entire thing of buttermilk because I think it tastes awful? So she laughed and, of course, gave me this nice little recipe tip here for those of us who do not carry buttermilk in our refrigerators. So the last ingredient, well, actually, one of the last few ingredients here is one and one quarter teaspoon of vanilla. I have these awesome um, measuring spoons here from Pampered Chef, and you can just dial in, <laughs> dial in which, um, how much you need. So this makes it nice. And a little bit more won't hurt. All right, so that's one and a quarter teaspoons of vanilla. Give that a stir. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and mash up my bananas. You're going to mash them up before you put them in. It makes it a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and peel them. Again, the riper, the better here. And we'll do this um, a couple of times. I'm going to grab a fork. Or a spoon, it doesn't matter. As you can see, if they were really right, this would be a little bit easier. We're going to make do. I'm smashed up here. 
And again, this is a two cup measurement of smashed or mashed bananas, which comes out to about four or five bananas. So there's two, I'm gonna have you scrape those in there. Do the other two. Uh, different recipes call for different amounts of bananas. I like this four or five banana recipe because bananas add a lot of moisture to your bread, which is nice. I up real good. and put those in and again if you're making just banana bread you'd stop here but since we're making banana nut bread I'll go ahead and add my nuts and again I'm using macadamia nuts and you can use walnuts you can use pecans or you can just omit the nuts all together we'll give this a really really good stir Still continuing to mash these bananas. With my spatula here. You get a good arm workout. You see how pretty that looks with all the chunks of bananas in there and of course the nuts and it's kind of a thick batter but that's what we want so our uh, oven has been preheating so again I want to remind everybody this does make two loaves we'll set this aside here so your bread pans are going to need to be greased and floured so you can do this by taking your Crisco and a baggie or some saran wrap and rubbing the insides with Crisco and then dumping a little bit of flour in there and sort of beating the pan um, around to get the flour coated on top of the Crisco. Or I found this wonderful spray that actually has the grease and the flour all in one spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that, which is just brilliant. A nice good coating on there so it doesn't stick. And that's what it does there, which is nice. <clears throat> Especially when I coat the corners. <laughs> that's where the bread tends to stick if it wants to. And there we have that. So we have our mix and our pans greased and floured. I'm going to go ahead and dump half of the mixture. into one and half of the mixture into the other and you will have to eyeball this this is where the spatula comes in handy you can get all the goodness out of there Ahead and distribute it across the pan. I'm gonna go ahead and get this off the side. All right, so now we have 
our banana nut bread into our two bread loaf pans that have been greased and floured. And then here is where you will add the oat crumb topping. So you just want to go ahead and sprinkle it onto the banana nut bread on the top. I even have a peanut butter crumb recipe topping that I'll go ahead and put that on the website as well because it's actually really good with the banana nut bread. My dad always liked peanut butter and banana sandwiches so he really liked the peanut butter topping on top of the bread. Alrighty. So now we have made our banana nut bread and I've taught you how to substitute uh, <laughs> regular milk and vinegar for your buttermilk. And uh, we've added macadamia nuts, we've made an oat crumb topping, and our oven has preheated to 350 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven. Bake time for this is between 35 and 45 minutes. And again, I feel that this time is varied because of uh, the bananas. Uh, sometimes um, when you use more bananas, again, I used five here, it tends to take just a little bit longer to cook around the 40 minute range. But you want to keep an eye on it from 35 minutes on and go ahead and use a toothpick and insert it in the middle and make sure it comes out clean or almost clean um, because once you take the breads out of the oven they actually will cook for about another five to ten minutes in the pan while they're beginning to cool so you just right at done or a little bit under done is fine and you'll use a handy dandy toothpick to test that so we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven. I'm going to set my timer for 35 minutes and that's when I'm going to start to watch them because like I said, this bread is very good, very moist and I don't want to overcook it. So we're going to do that and then I will show you the finished product. So we have taken our banana nut breads out of the oven and these actually had to cook for about uh, 42 minutes and I think it had to do with the fact that I had five uh, large bananas in here. So I tested it with a toothpick to make sure that it was done in the middle. And again, when you bring them out, they are gonna continue to cook for a little bit um, in the pans. So you can see how absolutely gorgeous these are, especially with the oat topping. Um, crumbles up on there nicely and gives a nice texture to the top of your bread. So when you get them out of the oven, you're gonna let them cool in the pan for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then you're going to want to run a knife along the outside uh, edge of the bread and then go ahead and carefully turn these out onto these wire cooling racks um, to cool the rest of the way. Or most of the time I can't help myself um, because they're, it's warm bread and <laughs> it just came out of the pan, out of the oven. So I go ahead and slice <laughs> into it when it's warm and put some butter on it and go ahead and, and eat it up. Um, I'll go over the ingredients again, but again, you can find these ingredients on greenitbeacon.com and greenitbeacon2.com uh, for this recipe and, of course, for all the other past recipes. Um, when we canned the pickles and we did the salsa and the zucchini relish and I think an Italian pasta bake and all kinds of other goodies. Um, so, again, make sure you look under. Uh, this is my Grandma Stern's banana nut bread with the oat topping. So, again, the ingredients are... Uh, one half cup of butter flavored shortening that is critical and one and one half cups of sugar and two eggs you will blend those together first and then you will add one half teaspoon of salt one teaspoon of baking powder and three-fourths of a teaspoon of baking soda you will need both of those two cups of flour and then one half cup of buttermilk or if you're like me just a little bit under one half cup of regular milk with a teaspoon and a half of white vinegar to simulate the buttermilk taste. And then you will need one and one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of mashed up bananas, which comes out to about four or five ripe bananas. I think the riper the better. Uh, they mash up a little bit easier. And then if you're going to add nuts, go ahead and put one cup of uh, whichever nut that you choose. Today I use the macadamia nut because like I said, I was feeling reminiscent about a Hawaii vacation and they love macadamia nuts there so you can also use pecans or walnuts so you'll mix that all together 350 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes you're just going to keep an eye on it and test the center for doneness with a toothpick if you're going to use the oat topping 
The oat topping is one fourth cup of butter that's cold that you will divide into little uh, pats of butter, one half cup of flour, one teaspoon of cinnamon, or like I had today, I did not have cinnamon, so I used apple pie spice, and you can also use pumpkin pie spice um, to, to add that cinnamon nutmeg uh, flavor to it. And then one fourth cup of firmly packed brown sugar and one half cup of oats. You will mix that together and set it aside. And once you put your batter into the pans, then you can go ahead and sprinkle your oat topping uh, on top of here. So again, if you go to the website, I've also included the peanut butter sprinkle uh, for the top of this. So you can have a banana bread with peanut butter on peanut butter sprinkles on top, which is very good. So again, visit the website for that. And like I said, we'll let these cool and then we'll slice it up and I'll probably send one of these over to the neighbor's house and save one for myself. So I really hope you enjoyed this recipe. Again, this is my grandmother Stern's famous banana nut bread recipe. And again, I urge you if you have a recipe from a grandmother or a great aunt or a friend that you really uh, enjoy, enjoy making or enjoy making with them, I urge you to make sure you write that down so that these recipes are not lost. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed. First and People's Bank has six convenient locations to serve you. From South Shore to the main office, First and People's Bank has been serving this area with complete banking services since 1932. Visit the home office near you, First and People's Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We are the home office. Come visit any of our six locations. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We really hope that you enjoyed our show. I want to give a special thank you to our guest. That was uh, Sean Moore, which is the Russell Middle School principal, and Joe Grizzle, which is the Russell High School girls soccer coach, and want to wish him all the best of luck in his uh, upcoming game on Saturday. So you want to stay tuned to hear about uh, hopefully a victory for the, for the Lady Devils there. And also uh, Carrie Ann Wellman, who was here for Kinder Music, uh, which is a very neat um, in my opinion, cutting edge way to sort of expose a young child to uh, learning and to sort of engaging motion and music uh, and tie that all into with um, helping these kids learn uh, some, some really good things for the future. So um, again, we are want to thank you, uh, say thank you to the McConnell House and okay <laughs> i'm getting notes from my boss there in the back um for letting us uh, come down here and do our show it's a really really beautiful house and we're so thankful for um being able to come down here and again the mccall house is open for tours and uh weddings and receptions and things like that so if you want to give them a call at 606-833-9098 to make an appointment to come down here and tour this beautiful home and um and to maybe set up a wedding or a reception and get involved with all the wonderful things that are going on down here please do so and uh, Hank said the note was for what? Anna Chafin. Anna Chafin is next week. Okay, so and just Diana Williams. And Diana Williams. All right, great. So next week, tune in for our show. We will have Anna Chafins and also Diana Williams from OLBH. So it should be a pretty good show. And I think we're going to also be making uh, chili in the kitchen this week. And so hopefully we'll have that segment ready for you to view uh, next Wednesday. Again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, make sure you tune in every Wednesday at 1 p.m. on greenupbeacon.com and greenupbeacon2.com. Till next time, I'm Brittany Hoback. This is the Green Up Beacon News Magazine, a presentation of the Green Up Beacon and First in People's Bank and Trust. Also brought to you by Stoltz Pharmacy, Our Lady of Belfont Hospital, Carmen Funeral Home, Meredith Chiropractic Office, and Tanya Pullen, State Representative. Your host today, Brittany Hoback, along with co-host Hank Bond, and editor and producer Keith Adkins. This is an exclusive presentation of the Green Up Beacon greenupbeacon.com and greenupbeacon2.com.